Okay, so I want to talk a little bit more about some of the benefits of packet switch networks when compared with some of the circuit switch networks that, uh, that preceded them. One of the reasons that packet switching has really taken over and packets are the primary where the data is transmitted over the internet is that there are a lot of benefits to packet switching when you compare it with establishing circuits and using circuits to transmit data. So let me walk through a simple example. I have a source and a destination and I want to send some data from the source to the destination. And here's my very simple network. It's pretty simple network topology. I've got uh, my source, my destination, and there are two routes, sort of physical wired connections that those uh, that the data can take uh, that go through a, a couple of different uh, 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 other computers. Um, Okay, so what do I need to do if I want to send the data over what would I would think of as a circuit? Well, first I have to establish a circuit. And remember, um, the way that works is, is as soon as I establish a circuit within this network, there is no other information that can be transmitted across this wire. And so that's one of the primary drawbacks of circuit switching is it forces me to reserve capacity in the network that I'm not sure I'm actually going to need. So go back to, you know, imagine the process of setting up an old circuit switched phone conversation with the circuit with the switchboard. She's actually the, the switchboard operator here, she is actually taking a wire and, and connecting it. And once that's done, that wire can't be used for anything else. That wire now leads directly from your house to uh, your you know, to, to your friend's house, and there's nothing else that can travel along that until you complete the call and the switchboard operator removes the wire from that socket. Um, and so that's one of the biggest drawbacks of circuits to networking is just the sense that once I've reserved capacity in the network, it's gone until that connection is broken. Um, and so, you know, the, it, and, and here's another problem with circuit switch networks, right? Which is, let, let's say that this connection right here goes down. Um, so let's say something happens, um, backhoe problem or power outage or something, and this, this connection goes down, this link goes down, this connection is now broken. This connection is now uh, completely dependent on the continuity and the continuous operation of the links that make up the circuit that I've created. And so if one of them fails, or if this one, if one of them fails, then the whole circuit is broken. Um, in, in contrast, let's talk about what I would do to uh, exchange data using packets. So first of all, packets don't require me to do any real pre, uh, pre-establishment uh, within the network. I don't have to reserve any network resources before I start to send packets. The packets are set and, re and received as needed. So when I'm using the network, it's there for me, and when I'm not using the network, there's capacity that can be used for other things. So imagine that uh, the source sends a few packets to the destination, and these packets travel along the network. Once they reach the destination, they're gone. They're, and there's really no connection, there's no network resources that still need to be uh, left there because these uh, two nodes are communicating. Um, the resources are provisioned and uh, are provisioned only when needed. Um, and they can be torn down uh, uh, when required. The other thing is, let's say that a per, uh, let's say that I'm exchanging some data, and this particular part of the network goes down again, right? So this link is gone. Um, all that happens is the next time I send some packets down this link, they're going to get here, and they're either one of two things is going to happen. Either the network is going to drop them, um, in which case I'll be forced to notice that and transmit them again, or the network may say, um, I can't uh, get them to the destination anymore, you should actually send them down this path. And so eventually what's going to happen one way or another is these packets are going to find a new route to their destination using different network resources than I used initially. And so this is one of the, 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 the way that packets can do this as opposed to circuits is one of the hallmarks of the survivability and the reliability that go along with the packet switch system. So when I, when I transmit data th using packets, you can think of it as I'm throwing those packets out into the network and they are allowed to find their own route to the destination. So there's, an, uh, there's another interesting corollary here, uh, which you might have noticed, which is that in this original scenario that I had set up, um, the circuit switch network, you might think the circuit switch network has I mean, somehow more capacity because it reserves 
uh, capacity beforehand, but it turns out that the circuit switch network in some ways has less capacity because the packet switch network can use both of these paths. So if the source suddenly has a lot of information to send to the destination, some of its packets, let's say this is one, three, and five, could go down this path, while other ones, two, four, and six, follow this other path. And so when needed, there's a lot of network resources at my disposal, uh, but when I'm not using the network, I'm not taking up any space. So these are the benefits of packet switching and some of the reasons that it has pretty much completely taken over the way that we build networks and completely wiped out circuit switching.